chaotic. It's the only way to describe the events of October 2nd, 2005, when 47 senior citizens crammed on board a tiny tour boat suddenly found themselves overturned on an otherwise tranquil autumn evening. 20 of these passengers tragically lost their lives and nine more were injured after the tour boat Ethan Allen sank due to negligence. In the aftermath, both civil lawsuits and criminal charges were brought. And in a dramatic twist, it was revealed that Shoreline Cruises, the owners of the Ethan Allen, was carrying a fraudulent insurance policy, which created further complications. The rabbit hole goes deep on this one, folks, and we'll discuss it all here. As always, my videos don't have any sponsors. The only thing I ask is that if you need a lawyer, you go to attorneytom.com and contact my team and I. At Attorney Tom and Associates, our goal is to protect the people from the powerful by becoming the best law firm in the country. To do that, it's important to learn from the influential cases of the past. I partnered with Sam from Brick and Mortar to bring attention to the legal aftermath of those maritime events covered on his channel and more shedding light on high stakes maritime cases and exposing negligence that's remained hidden for far too long. Because your justice matters. By the time those 47 seniors boarded the Ethan Allen to see the fall colors on the tranquil Lake George, the vessel had seen multiple major conversions throughout its life. The most recent being a thick wooden, fully framed solid canopy of unknown total weight. I say unknown because there were no inspections carried out to recertify it and establish passenger capacity after each modification. In fact, Shoreline Cruises owned three of these smaller tour boats at the time of what's called Dyer 40 design, the Ethan Allen, the De Champlain, and the Algonquin. Although originally designed and built in the mid-60s without canopies, their original buyers in Groton, Connecticut added a thinner metal and canvas canopy to the Double Dolphin soon after taking delivery. Double Dolphin was the Ethan Allen's original name, the Seahorse became the De Champlain, and the Sea Lion became the Algonquin. All three of which received an original capacity rating of 48 passengers and two crew for a total of 50 occupants. Also, based on the average person's weight in the time period of 140 pounds. This capacity of 50 persons was also established based on all three vessels not having canopies of any type. The trio would eventually be sold to Shoreline Cruises of Lake George, New York, renaming them to Ethan Allen, De Champlain, and Algonquin. The move from Groton, Connecticut, a harbor town on the coast, to the inland waters of Lake George, New York, meant they'd no longer be subject to U.S. Coast Guard jurisdiction, falling solely under the oversight of New York State. Shoreline Cruises would add similar metal and canvas canopies to De Champlain and Algonquin. Throughout their lives, Ethan Allen and De Champlain were closest in seating and canopy configuration. But for whatever reason, these vessels would continue to go without inspections or stability reassessments. Instead, their capacity plates still reading those same original numbers of 48 occupants plus two crew, the original manufacturer certification from the 1960s. Shoreline Cruises would modify all three yet again in 1989 through 91, adding the much more robust solid wooden framework canopies to all three with Algonquin getting a slightly smaller version. These modifications performed by Scarano Boat Builders of Albany, New York. As those 47 seniors boarded that fateful October evening, there was much confusion as they took their seats. The single operator had difficulty performing crowd control duties, and it was later discovered through testimony, some passengers didn't recall any sort of safety briefing before getting underway. Shoreline providing only the one crew member per tour of this size rather than the two required originally under Coast Guard jurisdiction. Other guests recounted, the captain tried to give a safety briefing, but everyone was talking amongst themselves too loudly for it to be effective, instead noticing the tour got underway regardless. In addition, life jackets weren't readily visible. They were stowed out of sight in two compartments, the majority in a closed storage cubby at the operator station, and a handful stowed underneath one of the passenger benches in the bow. On board these tours, it's common to hug the shore and take in the sights at a relatively slow, relaxing pace. And Sunday, October 2nd, 2005, was the perfect day for it. The Ethan Allen did have hinged plexiglass windows, but due to the tranquil conditions, these were folded up and stowed against the roof. The captain was slowly turning to starboard to go around Kramer Point when a larger vessel passed by to their starboard side, creating a two to three foot wake. 
This was something all boats on Lake George were accustomed to, for the most part. And as the tour boat's captain noticed the waves approaching, he attempted to turn even harder to starboard, a maneuver to ideally put the bow into the waves. The timing, though, between what was a rather abrupt right turn combined with the waves impacting the vessel's starboard side, created a situation that immediately became unrecoverable. The Ethan Allen had listed to port instantly and severely, leaving passengers in the starboard seats unable to keep themselves in place at such an angle. They began tumbling helplessly over onto the port side passengers which exacerbated the list, causing the Ethan Allen to completely capsize after only a few seconds at most. Many Samaritan vessels, swimmers, and divers arrived immediately, as did rescue authorities, but the chaotic rollover had happened so quickly, for many it was too late. Some survivors described the conditions inside the Ethan Allen after it overturned as chaos underwater, total confusion. In the darkness, people were stepping on, crawling over one another. One woman said that when she attempted to swim toward the light, people were pulling on my legs to crawl up me, so they pulled me down. In total, nine were injured, the captain amongst the lucky few to survive, and 20 souls aboard were lost. It was later determined through witness testimony the vessel passing by, creating that strong wake, was the riverboat-style vessel Mohican, a large cruiser owned by Lake George Steamboat Company, well known locally. With the Ethan Allen in NTSB custody, investigators were able to rule out mechanical failure, bilge pump operation, hole damage or water ingress as cause, but could not determine stability factors like verifying capacity ratings now that the stricken vessel was compromised. So actually, De Champlain's design, modifications, operation, and maintenance had been so similar to Ethan Allen, investigators determined they could use it for stability testing and recreate the loading conditions during the capsizing. In testing, the NTSB placed 12 empty water barrels along the center line to simulate the same passenger weights once filled. Initially, the test didn't seem out of the ordinary. When they emptied the centered barrels and moved eight barrels, enough to simulate passenger weights to the port side, they had only filled three when the De Champlain just about capsized right there at the dock. Catching investigators off guard, they halted the test for their own safety and the safety of the vessel. These results were quite telling. Investigators discovered and determined that despite those capacity ratings from the 60s of 50 occupants total, and keep in mind, ratings determined prior to even having canopies, their actual physical capacity was just 14 occupants. And again, with no stability testing performed for decades, this meant each time these vessels were modified, no one thought to reassess their capabilities. From the NTSB's findings, operator fatigue was not a factor. But because drug and alcohol testing of the Ethan Allen operator was not done in a timely manner, the toxicological analysis was inconclusive. The addition and subsequent modification of a canopy changed the Ethan Allen's stability characteristics. Because the double dolphin slash Ethan Allen did not undergo stability assessments after the addition and modification of its canopies, it was certificated to carry too many passengers. Its certificate of inspection permitted 50 persons but stability criteria should have limited the number to 14. Although it was the Ethan Allen that was involved in this incident, the potential for capsizing was substantially the same for the De Champlain. For the full technical breakdown of the Ethan Allen tragedy and more in-depth maritime case studies, check out my links in Tom's description below because your safety matters. First, we're going to talk about the civil cases, then the criminal case. On the civil side of things, multiple lawsuits were filed by the victims and their families, alleging a wide variety of damages, from just ordinary physical injury, to mental anguish, pain and suffering, to wrongful death, and everything in between. Now, if you've seen my previous episode on El Faro, you might think that since this was a mass casualty maritime event, the defendants would try to invoke the Limitations of Liability Act of 1851, that archaic law which allows a vessel owner to limit their liability to the post-incident value of the vessel plus its cargo. And sure enough, one of the defendants attempted to invoke a limitations action here. However, this can only be applied if the incident occurs on navigable water. And here, the court ruled that Lake George was not, in fact, navigable under the Limitations of Liability Act. 
While these vessels were all technically navigating on the waters of Lake George, this doesn't automatically mean that the waters are navigable under maritime law, something we'll touch on later. So now, if you're a victim in a situation like the Ethan Allen tragedy where multiple parties could be at fault, you're gonna need to sue all relevant parties because if you don't, the defendants may try to shift blame on any party left out of the lawsuit, even if they weren't a significant contributor to the event. In the case of Ethan Allen, many defendants were sued, including Shoreline Cruises, Ethan Allen's owner, Richard Paris, the captain of the boat, Scrano Boat Building Incorporated, the boat builders who performed the tour boat's haphazard modifications, Lake George Steamboat Company, the owners of the vessel Mohican that created the wake contributing to the Ethan Allen capsizing, Shoreline Tours and Travel, the Canadian travel company responsible for setting the travel agenda, not to be confused with Shoreline Cruises, and even claims against the state of New York were brought. These lawsuits were filed quickly, just over 30 days later by November 9, 2005, alleging negligence against these defendants. In order to prove negligence, there are four elements, duty, breach, causation, damages. With respect to shoreline cruises, generally speaking, a vessel owner owes a duty to provide both a seaworthy vessel and a safe voyage. This duty includes all aspects that a reasonable maritime operator would perform in the same or similar circumstances. This duty includes, but is not limited to, making sure the vessel does not exceed maximum capacity, making sure the vessel is fit for its intended purpose, maintaining the seaworthiness of the vessel and ensuring it is properly inspected, having enough qualified staff on board to mitigate the chance of and help in the case of an emergency, ensuring passengers have quick and easy access to emergency gear. Here, the plaintiffs allege that Shoreline Cruises in Paris failed to have a sufficient number of crew members on board the Ethan Allen. With 47 passengers on board, the one crew member, Captain Paris, was actually required to have an additional crew member on board. Additionally, Shoreline Cruises failed to ensure that Type 3 PFDs, or personal flotation devices, were readily accessible. Instead, they were hidden in a compartment at the captain's station at the stern and under one of the benches at the boat's bow. Not only did shoreline cruises not have PFDs readily available, Captain Paris did not properly instruct the passengers on the location of the PFDs or any other life-saving equipment. There was also no instruction on how to evacuate the boat in the event of emergency, which added to the chaos and confusion as the boat overturned. When it comes to the capacity of the boat, the Ethan Allen was only capable of carrying 14 people or 2,000 pounds. Instead, it was rated for 48 passengers plus two crew or 8,000 pounds. The design of the seating led to many of the passengers shifting helplessly across the aisle. This, combined with the haphazard modifications to the tour boat canopy, led to the boat's stability being severely compromised, and a rollover was just a matter of time. For the operator of the boat, Captain Paris, he failed to properly operate the boat under the conditions. Shoreline and Captain Paris claimed that the boat was thrown off balance due to the wake from another vessel. However, the alleged two and a half to three foot wake should be completely foreseeable to a seasoned boat captain. Additionally, Captain Paris maneuvered the Ethan Allen so sharply that the boat lost balance contributing to the capsizing. These circumstances show that Shoreline Cruises and Captain Paris breached their duty to the passengers to provide a seaworthy vessel and safe voyage. Had it not been for their disregard for basic passenger safety, these 20 lives would not have been lost. Shoreline Cruises and Captain Paris announced a confidential settlement agreement on June 17, 2008. With respect to Scarano, a contractual duty alone does not automatically allow for a civil suit to be filed for personal injury claims. However, a duty will be imposed against a contractor when they fail to exercise reasonable care in the performance of their duties which launches an instrument of harm, also referred to as creating a 
hazardous condition. Here, Scrano installed a new wooden canopy on the Ethan Allen, which plaintiffs argued led to the boat being unstable. Plaintiffs relied on the assumption that Scarano installed a safe canopy and that stability tests had been performed, which simply did not happen. This case was originally dismissed by the judge for failure to prove Scarano owed a duty to the victims. The victims appealed this decision and through the appellate court, it was determined that Scarano still did not owe a duty to the plaintiffs. The appellate court explained that there was no evidence of the previous canopy's weight versus the one that Scarano installed. Without being able to compare the dangers imposed by the new canopy, there was no way to prove that Scarano had created or amplified a dangerous condition. The court upheld the original dismissal of the case. With respect to Lake George Steamboat Company, the vessel Mohegan and its crew owed certain duties to the general public to act reasonably and to avoid endangering other boaters on Lake George. Here, the Mohegan created a wake of two and a half to three feet, and the failure to announce and warn other vessels of this dangerous wake endangered other boats and their passengers, such as the Ethan Allen. Because of this failure to warn, the Ethan Allen was unaware of the dangerous wake that the Mohican created until after the Mohican had already passed, which instigated the Ethan Allen's evasive maneuvers, contributing to the incident. How did Lake George Steamboat Company respond to their contribution to this tragedy? By attempting to invoke the Limitations of Liability Act. However, the court ruled that Lake George was not, in fact, navigable as required by the Limitations of Liability Act. While these vessels are all technically navigating the waters of Lake George, this doesn't automatically mean that the waters are navigable under maritime law. The law defines navigable waters as being navigable in fact when they are used or are susceptible of being used in their ordinary condition as highways for commerce over which trade and travel are or may be conducted in the customary modes of trade and travel on water. While it seems easy to define waters like the Atlantic Ocean as navigable for vessels participating in trade or travel, Lake George is one of the many inland bodies of water which falls into a gray area of the law where it's not so cut and dried and has gone back and forth with the designation changing based ultimately on the most recent court decision. In this case, the court decided that Lake George was not navigable, making the limitations action invalid. A small victory for the Ethan Allen victims and their families. With the limitations action out of the way, the case would go forward. Lake George Steamboat Company claimed that there was no possible way the Mohican could have been the cause of the Ethan Allen's capsizing, but local residents disagreed. Local businesses and homeowners claimed that the Mohican routinely created the biggest wakes on Lake George, with waves two and a half to three feet high, clearly not insignificant. In fact, Lake George Steamboat Company had previously been sued in 2002 for an injury allegedly caused by the Mohegan's wake. Lake George Steamboat Company announced a settlement with the victims on September 22, 2010. The Mohican is still operating on Lake George to this day. With respect to shoreline tours and travel, the Ontario-based travel agent, event organizers have a duty to exercise reasonable care in the due diligence of organization, transportation, and selection of excursions. Here, Shoreline Tours and Travel specifically solicited Michigan seniors to attend a fall color tour of upstate New York. They unilaterally arranged and organized the tour of Lake George. The travel agency also contracted Shoreline Cruises who selected the Ethan Allen vessel and its crew for the tour on behalf of the plaintiffs. The plaintiffs who perished had no say in the selection of the tour boat company nor the vessels that ultimately led to their deaths. This is why shoreline tours and travel were included in the lawsuit. However, this case was settled before the trial and remains confidential.
With respect to the case against the state of New York, the victims of the Ethan Allen sued the state, alleging that they violated their duty by failing to inspect and certify that the Ethan Allen was fit for its intended use. The plaintiffs allege that the state violated the navigation law, which requires state inspectors to issue a certificate of inspection, indicating that the vessel is safe and certifying a number of passengers that the vessel can safely transport. The court in this case explained that these statutory obligations do not, in fact, create a duty of care to the passengers of the Ethan Allen. This navigation law was not designed for personal injury action. Rather, it was to impose fines and criminal penalties upon vessel owners and operators who violate the law. Ultimately, the case against the state was dismissed. In cases like this, it's normal to assume a vessel owner would carry at least a bare minimum liability insurance policy to cover injury, wrongful death, or similar events. And while certainly not a policy large enough to cover a mass casualty maritime event, Shoreline Cruises did have $2 million in coverage, or so they thought. When attempting to invoke their purported $2 million in coverage in an effort to pay the victims, it was revealed that they had been sold a fraudulent insurance policy, sold to Shoreline Cruises by Global Property Owners Association Incorporated. This discovery was only just scratching the surface of what investigators uncovered to be a web of global fraud. Over a decade later, the scheme would become known as the Panama Papers. This fraudulent scheme sold fake liability insurance policies through benefit associations based out of Texas. It was revealed that whatever deal was cut between Shoreline and the families could potentially be worthless because the company had no actual way to pay what they promised. While the Panama Papers weren't fully exposed until 2016, cases like the Ethan Allen tragedy and Shoreline's attempt to pay their settlement led the way to exposing a network of 214,000 tax havens, which involved public officials, wealthy individuals, and entities from 200 nations. In a Times Union article from 2022, it was stated that liability claims were later settled, but only after Ethan Allen's owner mortgaged some of his property. We may never know if this settlement was for the original agreed amount or if the victims had to accept less. On October 5, 2007, two years later, the District Court Attorney of New York sought criminal negligence charges against both Shoreline Cruises and Captain Paris. These charges could have brought either 15 days in jail or a $250 fine, for the captain at least. It may seem like the captain was being charged twice for negligence, but the earlier filing was civil in nature, which leaves the opportunity to file criminal charges for the same offense. Civil negligence is a legal action which can be brought by a private party against a defendant for failing to act as a reasonably prudent person would in the same or similar circumstance. And the only remedy provided under the law for civil cases is money damages, meaning no actual convictions or discipline via the justice system. Criminal negligence, on the other hand, typically involves a negligent act that is so egregious it is likely to result in the risk of death or serious bodily harm. This can result in a conviction, jail time, community service, or similar actions enforced by the government. However, once brought before a grand jury in Warren County, New York, the criminal negligence charge was essentially thrown out as the jury felt the boat capsizing was not a factor that could have been foreseen by the captain. Reduced to a misdemeanor, the plea deal was accepted by the captain and shoreline. The captain received a $250 fine and 200 hours of community service. It was said that the captain struggled with his guilt, was deeply devastated by the whole ordeal, and some chalk it up to circumstance since the boat routinely carried more than 300% its actual capacity for decades. Many felt the rollover was just a matter of time. From the NTSB's recommendations to the U.S. Coast Guard, Provide guidance to the states on U.S. Coast Guard standards for and assessment of stability of small passenger vessels. To New York State, address the safety deficiencies identified in the investigation of the Ethan Allen incident and issue technical guidance to vessel owners on inspection requirements for modified vessels, stability assessments and criteria, means for determining maximum safe load condition, 
drug and alcohol testing, manning and safety briefings. Discontinue the use of capacity plate data associated with non-commercial boating standards for determining passenger loading on public vessels that carry more than six passengers and adopt the Coast Guard's small passenger vessel inspection standards. During the criminal case, the grand jury also made several legislative recommendations on how to prevent this kind of incident from happening again. The grand jury recommended every public vessel be certified for stability and structural integrity prior to service and every 10 years. A new 174 pound weight standard must be used. The results of these tests must be provided to the inspector at the Office of Parks, Recreation and Historical Preservation. Certificates of inspection must include the date of the last stability test and every public vessel should be required to prominently display these certificates. A vessel's stability must be tested whenever it's modified. Before a cruise begins, all public vessels must have the number of crew members on board as required by the inspection certificate. Any owner who violates the law will be guilty of a misdemeanor. Crew members should be trained in firefighting, life-saving, and operating the vessel. Crews must also be familiar with the vessel's emergency response plan and take annual training courses. The operator must keep a record of this training. All master pilots, engineers, and joint pilots must pass a test every five years before they are issued a license. In the event of a serious boating accident, the operator must undergo a breath test. All vessels must be equipped with the proper number of life vests. The captain or crew must give safety instructions at the start of any departure, including location of life jackets, exits, and fire extinguishers. The state inspector should conduct unannounced and undercover inspections of public vessels. The best way to improve public safety after a preventable tragedy is by exposing bad actors and holding them accountable in the legal system. Ethan Allen's victims did exactly that. Their efforts were not in vain. Hopefully the lessons learned prevent something like this from happening in the future. Thanks for watching and remember, your justice matters.